Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and I'm also with the um, Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. And I just got on the uh, Summit 4 chairlift, so I'm sitting, I'm on the chairlift on uh, Whiteface Mountain in Lake Placid. I'm heading up to the um, summit, which is I think it's the highest uh, hill in New York. I'll call it a hill, mountain. Um, 4,837 feet or something like that. So it's, um, the lapse rate is about 0 0.8 degrees Celsius per 100 meters. So what is that? It's about uh, 1,400 meters or something like that. Um, so temperature drops about 14 degrees Celsius um, as you go up and uh, so it's it's about minus 20 or so on the uh, summit but it's not that um, windy so conditions are pretty good just have to make sure that I don't uh, drop the phone and uh, you know I can hold it and give you some of the idea of the view as I go up the chairlift I filmed on this very same chairlift a video about a year I guess it was two years ago and I was talking about how science was under attack basically um, how we were going to untruths and uh, how uh, there were a lot of lies I think I don't think the term alt-right was uh, talked about too much then it did exist as a fringe group um, so I was talking about how science was under attack and we better straighten up our act and deal with uh, climate change because it was getting out of hand, abrupt climate change. And here we are two years later and uh, the situation has deteriorated both on the uh, climate front and on the political front, at least in the US, to deal with this issue. So just kind of give an overall summary of where we are. For a while I've been saying that we're in a climate change emergency. We need to slash fossil fuels, we need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere, we need to uh, apply solar radiation management, uh, deploy solar radiation management techniques to cool the Arctic, to cool the planet, to buy us time to slash fossil fuel emissions and also to uh, remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Um, but now I'll kind of just you know, rant a little bit about various topics, about whatever comes into my head. Um, I haven't done any preparation in advance for this video, but that's pretty much, uh, you know, par for the course. I want to talk a little bit about Cambridge Analytica, which is a data mining, uh, big data company. And the CEO of uh, Cambridge Analytica basically hung around with Trump during his uh, campaign you know, as he moved across the country for the, you know, but it's sort of a year before he won. Um, and uh, as Trump would go to different places to give speeches, the um, Cambridge Analytica CEO would be with them at all times, pretty much. And uh, would apparent, you know, apparently the data mining would determine from people people's uh, social media pages from their Facebook and Twitter feeds, etc. What sort of the view was of, you know, what words people liked in those regions, what the issues were, how people felt about various issues. So he could tailor his speeches um, in whatever city he was in to be a success, to use the jargon and the um, type of language that was common in the particular town that he went to so that his speeches were quite well received and he got you know people on board with him now the cambridge analytical people analytica people among other data mining people um, are still doing a lot of work i think on 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 uh, analyzing or providing feedback on policies so when Trump is setting policies, he can really kind of see how far he can go. So he went too far, obviously, with the immigration bills, the initial one, and there was backlash from that, and he's instigated some more. So 
I guess, I mean, it's, it's actually getting more and more dangerous as time goes on. As he consolidates power, as he gets rid of more and more people, as he um, has more and more uh, fake news. I hate that term, fake news. Okay, it's not news at all. It's actually outright deception. It's propaganda. It's outright lies. Um, and it should be called those things. You know, alt news or alt right or fake news. I mean, it's just, it's just outright fraudulent lies. And it's very, very important for the media to uh, call him on this sort of thing. So the problem is, uh, you know, with this big data is, you know, this is, is um, it can provide a feedback to these policies. So, you know, we know where Trump is going with this. I mean, basically, you know, his view of the world is that is that mainstream news is completely useless, that science doesn't matter. You know, you do policies, you, you run the country like a uh, company, basically. You run the, and, and this, uh, this type of thing doesn't work. I mean, we need public services, otherwise your streets don't get snow plowed. There's no such thing as mail service. There's no, uh, you know, we need some, we need, we need some amount of government at the federal level because, you know, the states can only do so much. Cities, you know, at the municipal level can only do so much. So there needs to be uh, some link between all of these things. And, you know, Trump's view is against climate change is, you know, it's the Chinese hoax or whatever. Who knows what he believes um, about it, but this is the, the most dangerous aspect of, of, of his administration. You know, firing climate scientists, firing any sort of scientists at all in all government agencies. You know, shutting down the EPA. These things are only the initial steps. It's going to get a lot worse. Um, I can see, like, look at NASA, for example. We've got some of the best scientists there. You know, they're looking out into space. They're looking at the Earth. They provide important satellite data for uh, weather forecasts, long-range weather forecasts, uh, hurricane forecasting, tornado forecasting, you know, all the warning systems that saves lives. Um, you know, it allows cities to prepare when something's heading their way. For example, you know, where I am, we have a massive uh, snowstorm heading here in a day or two. You know, it's important for us to know these things, right? It's, uh, it's very important. And, uh, you know, taking away our eyes in space and our eyes on the ground to assess weather and climate is a complete disaster um, for the planet and, you know, complete disaster for the U.S. I mean, make America great again. It's like make America, take America back to the uh, Dark Ages 2.0, call it. Make America the laughing stock of the world with all of these lies and uh, mistruth. Um, make America vulnerable to extreme weather events that's going to cost billions of dollars uh, in infrastructure costs. You know, all of these things are going exactly the opposite way to the way that we need to go. So I hope that there's enough pushback. And look at all the NASA scientists. You know, if we cut the Earth monitoring programs, if we cut all the climate scientists, you know, scientists in government, then it's really going to economically destroy the US and be very harmful to the world and take away our ability to deal with climate change. Just when it's getting worse and people are recognizing it's getting worse and we have to do something, it's an emergency. The political situ situation is going the opposite uh, direction. So anyway, um, that's it for my rant. I have to get off the chairlift. Thank you.